Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of edible things and turning your backyard into a fruit paradise like I have in mine here in sunny Florida. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about the four stages of mango tree flower development. And this is a perfect time to do it because it is spring, essentially, late February in central Florida. Beautiful skies and we have examples of all four stages happening now. Okay, let's get right into it. So, okay, let's take an up-close look at a mango flower. It's a thing of true beauty, without any doubt. Just so incredible. When I see a mango flower, as Alan Watts would say, don't you see how it's just like a symphony? It's just like it. Beautiful, perfectly orchestrated explosion of fruit power. The king of fruits, the mango, I would claim. So, the mango flower itself is really a collection of hundreds of flowers, little flowers, and I'll break one off. They grow in these very brittle little stalks, and they go through a life cycle that happens over the course of a week or two, three weeks, uh, where they go through these stages. And Ooh, smells good. The first stage I still have an example of. The first thing that the mango tree does is every single tip of every single branch, if your mango tree is healthy, sprouts a flower. And this one has not sprouted yet, but you can see what it looks like. It's actually, it will, I'm sure. Here's another example. So in the second stage, you have this flower that emerges, and they can get really big. This is actually not as big as they get. You can see even this one is small. It depends on the, you know, the flowers are slightly different. You follow this form on all mangoes, but depending on the variety. I've got three varieties of mangoes. Uh, this one is the Tommy Atkins mango, which is a great, resilient, pest-resistant type of mango tree that is easy to grow produces picture-perfect mangoes, but I'm going to be honest, the flavor is not in the top, you know, not 80th percentile. It's good, but it's not outstanding. And, however, the Hayden mango tree right here to me is the best. Perfect pulp ratio, best flavor, but it does suffer from, it's a little more temperamental, from bottom rot, from uh, other problems like that, from getting wet feet from you know needing to compact the roots down at the base there are a lot of things you're going to need to do to care for this mango tree adequately this year I've done a lot of those and I think it's gonna uh, respond so in the second stage you see this and you can see the Tommy Atkins is for the most part in the second stage but it's beginning to transition to the third stage where it see this one gets a little bit brown starts to die and it's this Hayden mango tree that really gives you the best example of that stage. And in that stage, you see that the flowers begin to fall off. It gets more like sticks. And what's happening is those flowers, some of them are going to turn into little fruit. And then out of those little mangoes, only some of those mangoes will make it. But in stage three, that process is happening. So it rains down these little flowers. In stage four, start to see just a couple remaining and what you also see is that some of the branches well they didn't set fruit at all and this is a particular temperamental variety in my opinion to grow here but some are setting larger fruit you see there's two on that one so that might be a winner and some up top you know how many mangoes would you want to have this tree try to grow it's not that big and we don't want to tax it too much but we want to get the some mangoes we're at the point where we should be getting fruit so, yeah, it's going to select exactly the right amount. And you can see, up towards the top, fully sun-drenched, it's really starting to down-select. But the Edward Mango, unlike the Tommy Atkins, right next to it, 
is uh, a little bit more slow growing, a little bit more temperamental, a little bit more salt intolerant. These are things which affect it in my yard. That's why it's been slow to kind of grow. This year it's up above the sprinklers, which are very salty, and uh, it's doing quite well, but it's struggled through that for years. Now I can really get a move on. The Tommy Atkins at no point ever struggled in any way. Even when it gets roasted, like you can see on the top here, it got roasted by salty, cold wind. And it'll brush that off like nothing. It'll have those burned leaves for a short amount of time, drop them right on down. I'll rake them up, put them in the mulch, in the uh, compost, and it'll grow new leaves like crazy. And this is the point where these mango trees can start to become almost monstrous. Which is, of course, the scenario with Mr. Hayden Mango, which is, of course, the king of all mango trees in my estimation. But, you know, depending on the type of mango snob you or I are, you may have a different pick. <laughs> but for sure, you have a pick if you're a mango person. But this one has just become gigantic. And now it's at the point where I've got to make some hard decisions got a thick trunk down low very woody we don't want that but it wants to be an 80 foot tall tree I, in Antigua I saw some mango trees that were easily that tall towering and I realized at that point wow that's how big these things can get <laughs> I guess you know when you read 60 feet in a in a horticultural website or something it doesn't seem as real as seeing it in person I'm going wow okay well I planted this kind of close to a 220 power line and look at that it's over it you know so that's the kind of issue that we want to avoid with fruit trees. Obviously, we can't have you picking near gigantic power lines. And my guidance is the guidance of every power company on Earth, which is if you've got fruit growing over your power lines, like this hand of banana, it's called Power Company. I'm actually waiting for them to, to uh, come and trim that. This, this uh, banana orchard has just gotten too big. The Musa bananas are now fully mature and crank and they're just too big. They can't be here anymore. They worked there for years, you know, probably close to eight years, nine years, but now it's done. And so I'm going to be moving that actually back to this area. I've already started to transplant some of them, but I'm not going to be in a situation where I'm going to have anything growing up there. And, and I've got to trim this off. It's actually not that bad to be able to trim this back. I don't need the power company to, to do anything there, but I'll just do the couple little limbs. I'll let go back but now I got to make a decision with this mango tree now that it's gotten this woody do I you know perform major cuts like I had to do here you know, do I that one was growing right up into this power line and I had to get rid of that do I do more major cuts it's hard to say it'll come right back if I trim it so I could I know it would be but it would be so painful to do it I could just hat rack it uh, it's hard to even say it, but I could do it. And then I know it'll sprout back like crazy, but I'm going to have to cross that bridge. By the way, if you have any input on this, help me make the decision. Leave some comments. Let me know what you would recommend doing. But I think it's probably at the point where I've got to pay the piper, got to uh, hat rack her down, and fertilize it with copious amounts of rabbit manure, which I now have my sweet little bunnies. Just look at them hard at work producing rabbit manure. I'm going to go in and pet them after this video. Let them run a little bit. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, what's the, what's the right decision here? Mango trees. And eventually, if you do the right thing, your mango tree is going to about look like this. You probably do a better job than me, though, and keep it trimmed real low. But, you know, there's a thousand stories in this mango tree that have occurred over the years. What I mean is hurricanes and, you know all kinds of iterations. This is probably close to a 20 year old mango tree, just to give you an idea of the magnitude. Uh, whereas this Tommy Atkins is a little later to the party, but showed up here eh, maybe 15 years ago. But I've done a much better job trimming that. I kind of applied the lessons learned here by letting it get real, by letting it get real, you know, uh, big trunked. And I didn't let that happen there as much. And there's a way to do it for sure. I'm gonna do a mango tree trimming video on that tree here after it fruits this year so subscribe if you're not already but uh stay tuned for that video i'm going to enjoy doing that i want to let it fruit first though and that's the thing you know this is the time we, we can't be fooling around here folks it's late february in florida and we have got 
the potential to have hundreds of mangoes here in a, in a month, in a couple of months. And uh, I've actually got some very special friends of the channel now. I'd like to distribute some of those too. So I'm uh, like Funky Chicken Farms and some other things. So that's going to be super fun to get that going this year. But I want this crop to be bumper crop. And how do I know or why do I think it's going to be a bumper crop? Well, because I'm feeding it copious amounts of bunny manure. And if you don't have an animal component into your yard yet, you know, uh, like I didn't really. I was using cow manure, which come to find out is almost useless, really. Very hot fertilizer, very hot manure. Some of the viewers of the channel kind of pointed that out. And then Funky Chicken Farms drove that point home. Now I have rabbit manure, which you can just, it's not a hot manure, apply directly to the base. And everything is thriving. As a result, I see noticeable differences. I'll, I'll give you an example that's not a mango tree, but this longan tree, which they call dragon's eye fruit. I love it. It's like a lychee, but it's the kind of thing that will grow actually in a more salty environment. It's wonderful. It hasn't fruited for eight years, at least. And I added rabbit manure to the base of it, watered it in, and now look at this. Fruit. Flowers, potentially. First time. First time. So I'm revitalizing my yard by having these sweet, adorable bunnies in my life now. I'm putting the manure on everything. By the way, this wand waterer was a game changer. I got it for like 20 bucks. I'll put a link. Love that thing. But look, grapefruit tree. Loaded with sprouts. I'm going to make a video about this guy too. I made a how to plant the grapefruit tree video. You can watch right here when I planted this thing, but now it's off and running. So hey, if you like these videos about growing mango trees, like the Edward, Tommy Atkins, and the Hayden, well, then go ahead and subscribe. And you can learn everything I know at least, and maybe tell us some things that you know from your mango tree growing experience and we can get the king of fruits going in everybody's yard. Let's get inspired. I mean, it's still spring. One of the things I love to do with this channel is just simply inspire people, hope to inspire people to get an edible system established in their yard. It's so fun. First reason, it's a deep connection with what's happening right now under your feet. Love that. Provides sustenance and security for you in terms of food. And it can even expand in areas where you have adorable little bunnies as pets and have established a bunny zen sanctuary in your yard where your whole family can go out and enjoy a deeper connection with what's going on. Okay, so that's the kind of things we talk about on this channel. Can't help but show off all the time my beautiful worm farm. By the way, I have another video here about the worm farm. How to make it. Oh man, another game changer. And that is where all the sweet worm tea comes out. Do you have worm tea? I didn't not that long ago. I do now. And I'm loving it. Hey, thanks for watching. Eat your backyard. Why not get your fruit forest started right now?